Welcome to another episode of Mexican in the Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how I make burritos and this is a bit more in the way they make them in Ciudad Juarez, in Chihuahua. It's a bit more traditional, a bit more of a normal snack, normal meal, not this massive thing that they have now made like thousands of variations where it's stuffed with a crazy amount of things, maybe bacon, rice, beans, uh, guacamole, uh, meat, they sometimes cover it with melted cheese with some kind of sauce and it becomes a huge massive thing that it's kind of the version that has evolved uh, across the border in like a, more of a Tex-Mex way. I'm going to show you the a bit more basic kind of like just very simple burrito. It's a bit smaller but I think it's also full of flavor. It's really nice. They sometimes use some kind of kind of schnitzel to stuff it. Maybe some uh, chiles capeados or these like stuffed chilies. They use uh, it can be some pork, some beef, it can be some beans, it can be combinations of those things, some avocado sometimes, cheese. But in this case, I'm going to make pulled beef with some chilies, I'm going to make some beans and maybe a bit of avocado. Some people add some cheese to this, so I'll show you how it's done. And this is my version of Mexican burritos. First, we need our filling. In this case, I'm going to use pulled beef, and for that we first need to cook our beef. Traditionally, chuck roast is used for making the pulled beef. If you are not sure which part is this in your country or where to find it, you can also go to your butcher and just ask him what's the best for this. I am using a pressure pot because it's a bit quicker, but you can also cook this on a normal pot on the stove. I have 800 grams of meat with some water. I'm going to add half a large onion or one small one. I'm going to add three to four bay leaves. I'm using some salt I bought from an Estonian store with some vegetables and some herbs, but any salt will do. Then I will add more water until my meat is covered. I trimmed my meat before, but I'm going to add this fat here just because I want the broth to have a lot of flavor. Also, if you have some bones with bone marrow, you can add them here because we are going to use that broth later. I'm going to close my pot and I'm going to set it on high pressure or the meat mode for 50 minutes. If you are doing this on a normal pot on the stove, then make it boil and then put it on medium fire for about two, two and a half hours. Now our beef should be ready and we can take it to a chopping board. We also set aside the broth because we are going to use it later. Now we're going to take two forks and we're going to shred everything. This is up to you, but I think it's nicer when you have really thin strings, but some people like it also chunky, so whatever you prefer. After a while, it should look something like this, and we can set it aside. I highly suggest that if you are not going to use this right away, then you keep it in a container with some of the broth. This way, it won't get too dry. This recipe uses dried chili, usually six Colorado ones, but here I cannot find that, so I'm going to substitute with six guajillos. These are very similar, they're just slightly spicier. You could also use Anaheim or California chilies. What we want to do is take the stem off, open them, take as many seeds as we can, and then set them aside and we will hydrate them. For that we will just take some boiling water and pour it on top of them. Then we will leave them there for maybe 10-15 minutes. While we wait we can start washing our potatoes. These are medium sized potatoes. They are between 3 and 400 grams in total. If you are doing this for a lot of people you can also add a bit more potatoes and then make more burritos with the same amount of meat. Once we wash the potatoes we have to peel them and cut them into small cubes. We're going to cut these into small cubes because we're throwing this with the meat and we want them to cook quickly. Our chilies have been now for about 15 minutes in the hot water and now we can throw them into the blender. Then I will add half a large onion or one small one. I'm going to add one garlic clove, one cup of the broth we had from the meat and some salt. After that we can close the lid and start blending. Remember the chilies might take a while to blend, so just keep it there for a while, make sure you blend them as much as you can, and then we can use our sauce. Once the sauce is ready, you can check it out and it should have a bright red color. Finally, I will take half a large onion or one small one and one garlic clove and I'm going to chop everything. I have a pan on a 4 out of 6, so medium, medium high fire. I have a bit of canola oil and I'm going to start by throwing in some onion and garlic. I will cook this for a while until I start seeing the onion to change into this see-through kind of color. Once my onion has changed color, I'm going to throw my beef in and I'm going to mix everything. Now I'm going to take a strainer and I'm going to throw my sauce in there. Straining is not completely mandatory, 
but if you don't strain you might have some chili seeds or some small pieces of chilies because they don't always blend properly and those might go in between your teeth those are quite annoying at this point i'm also going to add two more cups of the broth we got from cooking the meat the sauce is quite thick so there was a lot of leftovers in the blender so i added that broth into the blender first rinsed it and then i added it here now i'm going to take a spoon and i'm going to help the sauce go through at the end you will notice there's a thick paste you can take that and throw it away once we have the sauce in there, we can add the potatoes. We want to make sure to mix the potatoes and make sure they are in the sauce because we will leave them here for a while and we want them to cook evenly. If there's some potatoes on top that didn't quite mix, you might get some potatoes that don't cook evenly. Right now, I'm adding a pinch of oregano. I'm also adding a bit of salt. I will mix everything once more and then we want to leave this on the stove on a medium fire for about 15 minutes. After about 15 minutes, you might notice that our meat is quite thick, there's not so much liquid in there, and that's exactly what we want, because we want to add this into our burrito, and we don't want too much liquid to come out from the other side and make a mess. If I'm eating this at home, on a plate, on the table, then I would say this is enough, and it doesn't matter if you have a bit more liquid, but if you want to cook it and then prepare them, pack them, and take them with you, to some maybe picnic then i would recommend you try to reduce it as much as possible at this point our meat is ready and the potatoes just melt in your mouth so this is exactly what we wanted now our filling is ready some people might only use the beef for the burrito but i really like it when you have a layer of refried beans i have some ready refried beans here but in the description i will leave two links one with the recipe from scratch and one where i use canned refried beans and show you how to warm them up if you're making your own burritos, I highly recommend that you make your own tortillas. In the description, I'm going to leave a link for my last video where I show you how to make your own tortillas. But of course, if you don't have time or you want simply not to go through all the hassle, you can go to the store and buy some flour tortillas, just warm them up on the pan. Finally, we have all of our ingredients ready and we can start putting our burritos together. First, I'm spreading some refried beans on my tortilla. On top of the beans, I'm going to add the beef and I'm going to make sure there's potatoes equally spread all over my burrito. As I said earlier, these are not the massive burritos that you can barely wrap, so make sure you don't go too crazy with the beef. You can put enough that you can roll them and you're going to be able to close them quite easily. Some people might add some cheese now so it melts a bit, or some fresh cheese. Personally, I like it with a bit of avocado. I think it gives it a bit of a freshness and it's just really nice. Right now, our burrito is ready and we can wrap it. You can just press with your fingers, pull it a bit back and continue rolling it. This is ready and you can serve it with some hot sauce on the side. On my playlists, you can see a lot of the recipes I have for hot sauces. These burritos are ready to be eaten right away, but I'm going to wrap them in aluminum foil. I'm gonna leave them there for about 15 minutes. The ingredients are hot and steamy, so it might condensate and it will change the texture a bit, but this is how some people sell them and they're quite good. This is great if you want to take them for a picnic, for example. This is how I make these Mexican burritos. These are really nice. You can see the color of the tortilla. The sauce is there. It's really nice. This is quite small. You, it depends on the size of the tortilla you make or you buy. But I can tell you, this is really delicious. The combination with the beans, the avocado and the beef it has a lot, a lot of flavor. And it's a really nice thing. You can wrap it with the aluminum and it also gets a different texture. You can try which ones of uh, these two you like. You can make it with or without aluminum and just letting it be there for a few minutes. Um, this is just perfect. I hope you liked the video. Press like, subscribe, activate the bell, all those kind of things. And see you in the next one. Hmm.